Enhance your experience by becoming a supporting member. Gain access to unseen videos and video requests. Three day free trial by visiting zionmembership.com. Empaths, as you're probably aware, um, you as listeners, when you're listening to information about the narcissist involved in your life or trying to interpret some meaning into your own existence from the words that I share, um, you'll realise that everyone is at different points in their journey. You know, if you think, you know, there's other listeners too that are listening that may be less evolved in their healing journey than you, you could be further along in your healing journey, healing journey than them or vice versa, right? So I tried to keep it relevant to the listeners, you, you as the listeners, right? But I had a bit of a realisation today, um... And I wanted to share with you it, so it's just a freestyle. But um, there's a certain level of tolerance. Um, being a victim of narcissistic abuse, especially immediately after, there's a certain level of tolerance. It's like, and what I mean by this is like you've been conditioned to be abused. You've been conditioned to tolerate this type of bizarre behaviour. Right. And it doesn't <clears throat> discard, reverse discard or you cutting them off doesn't really come into play, you know, but there is a certain level of tolerance that you have. Um, and it's like, you know, you may still part of you may still desire to rekindle, for example, or you you might find yourself in the cycle of going off and on again with a narcissist involved in your life in a romantic sense. It doesn't just have to be romantic sense. You can have on and off relationships with friends, etc. But generally speaking, you know, you, you can get pulled back into these narcissistic dynamics off and on again. Um, and the thing is, um, you know, <clears throat> basically the, the realisation occurred to me that like, even if you've heard me say in other videos before, I haven't really broke it down like this, but you might have heard me in other videos before say, oh, door slam, bolt and weld it shut, you know, don't let them back in your life. And But the fact of the matter is you're, you're all on different points of your journey. And what I want to bring to your attention today is wherever you are at on your journey, you might have already door slammed them. So maybe this video may not be relevant for you, but you might still be able to interpret some meaning from it. So stick around. Um, what I want you to understand is each and every one of you survivors and victims of narcissistic abuse from the narcissist involved in your life will actually kind of ascend and evolve and develop and rise above the hurt and the pain. And you're going to hit that point in time, at a specific time period, and you're going to remember it when you... It may be gradual. It may be gradual. So it may be like... um more and more of a time till you eventually hit that point or it could be a sudden realization it, it depends on you as a person but you're going to remember that time when you finally had enough right you finally had enough and that's gonna happen you don't have to give it much thought you know and that's what i've realized maybe i've made some errors in my past videos where i've kind of been telling you to door slam bolt and weld it shut you know, um, don't build, don't, don't give them an inkling. Don't, don't, you know, don't give them an inch because they'll take a mile. Like, <sighs> realistically, you know, that could have made you feel bad. And I had this realization today, like, because you may not have been in the place in your own journey to door slam them yet. And that's totally understandable because this is what the realization was about, about that certain level of tolerance, Right. You do. You've been conditioned to narcissistic abuse. You've been conditioned to the love bomb. You've been conditioned to the devaluation. You're not, you may not be at the right place to door slam them yet. And that's totally fine. That's what you need to understand and embrace. Don't just door slam them because you've heard someone say it. You've got to feel it in your heart. You've got to know it's time. You've got to ascend to that point. You've got to feel it in your heart, mind and soul like, you want nothing more to do with this parasite, regardless of how it ended. Discard, reverse discard, or you even cut them off because it become too toxic. 
um, each and every one of those kind of scenarios, discard, reverse discard, or cut them off because they become too toxic, can still leave room for the narcissist involved in your life to get back in affiliated with you in some sort of way, you know? But it's only when you do this door slam and when an empath does it, an empath gives chance and chance and chance. An empath has a high level of tolerance. They give chance and chance and chance. They, they, they've got the savior empath streak. They try to fix things. You try to fix things. You try to repair things. But you're just going to hit that point in your journey. I don't know when it's going to be. It could be now. It could have already happened. It could be in the future at some point. But you're going to hit that point when you're like, you're done. You're done. And I did put a poll out yesterday and I said, I wanted, I, I should have probably said, um, honestly answer. I think it's honest, the answers. But I said, does anyone want the narcissist back in your life? I don't know if you've seen the poll. I just <clears throat> wanted to get a rough idea. There's nothing wrong with wanting the narcissist back in your life. Don't feel like there's something wrong with you. Don't feel like, you know, so I'm grateful for the ones that did um, say that, yeah, sometimes they wish they were back in their life. That's that's a good thing, you know. It's best to be honest all the time, you know. So I was grateful that there was, well, I wasn't grateful. I'm not grateful that they want the narcissist back in their life, but I was grateful that they were open and honest enough to say they wanted the narcissist back in their life, right? But what you've got to understand is this realization that I got is is about the tolerance that you have, you know, you have a high level of tolerance of abuse because you've been conditioned that way, and you are or will have or you have already going to hit that point when you want nothing more to do with them, and it doesn't matter what they say, it doesn't matter if they hoover you, it doesn't matter if they try to love bomb you again. It doesn't matter if they apologize to you. It doesn't matter if they send you flowers or gifts or whatever. You've just had enough of it all. And you have you want nothing to do with them. That's when the door slam occurs. And it's going to happen in each and every one of your empath journeys. Right? Like I said, I'll repeat it again. It doesn't matter if you were discarded. It doesn't matter if you are reverse discarded. It doesn't matter if you even cut them off because it become too toxic. There's still a place in your healing that you need to get to. And that's the door slam. Right? It's game over for them. Once this door slam is the real door slam. You might have shut the door on them before. You know? You might have shut the door on them before. Time and time again. and you, But the door wasn't shut properly. It wasn't bolted and welded shut. It wasn't firmly shut. You know? And that's why they creeped back in your life like little creeps, little dusty weirdos, and they managed to affiliate with you again. You know, that's what they that's what they managed to do. They always do. They're slimy, you know, slimy parasites. You know, they managed to worm their way back into your life. You know, weirdos. Maybe not all of you, but some of you might have just experienced the Hoover or them trying to talk to you again or them. Uh, uh, bothering you on social media or stalking you in person you might have just had to put up with some bizarre types of behavior um maybe it, it wasn't always just them trying to beg for you back or say they're sorry you know but in some cases that can be the case where they do say sorry and beg for you back you know but eventually you're just going to hit this point where you've had enough and that's why i just want you to understand from this video i know i've been a bit choppy and changey but i just want you to understand you don't need to give it too much thought. Just go with the flow. Follow your heart, mind and soul. Follow God's guidance, the universe's guidance. You know, you're going to hit this point. At one time or another, you will hit this point. And many of you listeners are probably already like, Zion, I've already door slammed them. I've already bolted it. I've already welded it shut. They're not coming back into my life. And that's great. That's great news for me to hear. Like, I'm really happy that you know, if you've done that already. But for those of you that haven't, don't give it don't give it too much thought. Because you've got to understand it's just gonna happen. They're gonna do one thing too many. They're gonna do one thing too many. They're gonna devalue you or gaslight you one too many times, or they're gonna they're gonna do something that offends you one too many times, and you're just gonna have enough. You're just gonna have enough of it. You've had a belly full, you're just gonna have enough of it. 
and you're going to door slam them. And when that door slam takes place, that is the, the final door slam. That is the final discard. I probably should have said that earlier. That's why I said it doesn't matter if you were discarded, reverse discarded, or you cut them off because they're becoming too toxic. The moment you do this door slam is the final discard, and they know it. They know it's game over. When an empath does a door slam, it's brutal. It's absolutely brutal. There's no coming back for them. It doesn't matter what they do. You have desensitized to any wanting any affiliation with them. You literally don't care what they do. Indifference will shortly follow or would have already come before you've done the door slam. You'll literally just not give a piece of shit about them. You just literally won't care what they do. And that door slam is final. You know, and it's it's highly unlikely or virtually impossible for them to actually come back. And for those of you, for those of you that may have done the door slam or you felt you've done the door slam or you felt you've got no contact or you felt you don't want nothing more to do with them and they managed to worm their way back into your life, do not think less of yourself. What you need to understand is you didn't do this. It wasn't orchestrated by God. It wasn't time for you to do the final door slam yet. It wasn't the, the real time. There was still more you needed to see. Perhaps God wanted you to see more of the unmasking. Perhaps God wanted you to see more of the manipulation or the devaluation or the smear campaign. Perhaps God just wanted you to see a little bit more or the universe wanted to see you, make you see a little bit more of the true nature of this parasite involved in your life before you actually go ahead with that final brutal door slam and when a chosen one or an empath does the door slam it's game over it doesn't matter what they do what they say what they try to do how they try to affiliate with you you're done with them you're absolutely done with them you know so it was a bit of a realization i just wanted to because i haven't really angled a video like this before I haven't really angled it. It just it just come to me like a download or an epiphany or a realization. I'm normally angle I normally angle the video like kind of saying to you, you've got a door slam them, you've got a bow here, you've got a world it shut. You know, that's what I normally say. But for some of you, that may not have been beneficial for you to hear because you were still so closely interlinked with them. And it doesn't matter what I say, you know, if you're not ready at that, if you if you haven't hit that point in time that's going to happen, like I say, it's going to happen at one point or another. If you haven't hit that point in time where you just go through with a door slam, the real door slam, the bolt in world of the shut door slam, you know, um, it's not really going to make sense to you. So all I want you to understand is you may reflect, you may think about things, but eventually, you know, you're going to reflect on things. You won't have to give it too much thought. And you're just going to have enough. You're just going to have, have had enough of it. And you're not going to want nothing more to do with them. And you're literally not going to care if they're with a new supply. You're not going to care what they're doing. If they're going on lavish holidays. You're just ni literally not going to care. You won't care even if you're still alone. You're not going to rush into a new relationship. You just don't. You probably don't even want a relationship after the abuse you've been through. And that's totally understandable. And that's totally justified. And that's totally fine. You know. Take your time to heal. Before you move on. Like I always say. You know. But. You're just, you're just going to hit that point. It's just going to come. You know. So whether you've been a few weeks out. A month out. Some years out. Along that timeline, however long, you're eventually going to hit the point when you don't want them back. When you do this door slam, this brutal door slam, and you bolt it and weld it shut. And they're going to be pissed. They're going to be resentful. They're going to be annoyed that you've actually woke up. That you've actually had enough of them. That you're not going to tolerate any more of their BS. And it's a beautiful thing. Reaching the place when you reach indifference and you've done a door slam and you don't care about what they're doing anymore. Is a beautiful place to be in. So you should pat yourself on the back. I don't mean to mean that in a derogatory way. I couldn't think another way to summarize it up. But be proud of yourself. Maybe that's a better way. Not pat on the back. But just be proud of yourself. For, for, for reaching that point. Or doing a door slam. It takes a lot of courage to do a door slam. You know. These individuals meant so much to you at one point in your life. They did. They were an important person in your life. To you anyway. You know. And you are an important person to them. They're going to sure know. Hell or know about that. How much of an important person you are in their life. Losing an empath is going to be catastrophic for them. 
but you know just be proud of yourself going through with a, a, a door slam having enough of them you got to understand there's so many victims of narcissistic abuse that can never let go of the narcissist you know but you got to understand one thing as well the narcissist can never let go of the chosen one or the empath they can never let go they can never let go right they can never let go um they hold on for dear life even if there's a lot of distance between you even if there's not been much word said they still hold you very close to whatever sick twisted contorted messed up deranged heart that they have they still hold you very close inside them they do you know so this door slam you haven't enough uh and eventually it will probably lead to them reaching out with a hoover I'm not going to say it's going to happen overnight. It could happen a couple. It could happen a few weeks away, month away, a few months away, a year away, a few years away, several years away, even decades away. But they can eventually reach out with the Hoover, and you know, uh, 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 let me backtrack a little bit. They'll actually feel it in the spiritual realm when you do the door slam as well, because naturally, when you do the door slam, you'll start thinking of them less. Um, you may go through the anger phase and be angry and stuff like that. And that's okay. It's natural. But they'll feel that you've door slammed them. They'll feel it in their spirit. You don't even have to say any words. They're going to feel it. And oftentimes when you door slam or you've had enough, they pop up. But they may not. Or they may pop up further down the line. And then you can have the chance to do the final door slam again in their face if you want to. Or you could just ignore them. It's totally up to you. You could just totally ignore their message totally ignore their hoover attempt and just leave them on blast or you could tell them to go away if you in the in the in the way that you want to tell them to go away you know um sometimes it's just better to be polite and just be affirmative or kind and just tell them no you're done don't want anything to do with you you know you don't have to swear you don't have to get aggressive you don't have to get anything like that you know, but honestly, it's going to happen at one point or another. So for all of you that haven't door slammed them yet, it's going to happen at one point or another. For all of you that have door slammed them already, I commend you. That's a good way of putting it. Instead of pat on the back, I really commend you. And for those of you that feel like you can't door slam them yet, you are going to get to that place where you believe or you realize that you can actually door slam them. Um, yeah just just be patient don't rush you know honestly if you uh if you door slam a narcissist before you know you're kind of through my time before you're really in tune with your actions you know before you're really um decisive in your actions you know, it's not a good thing. So wait till you're ready to do the door slam. And it will be like a real door slam. It will just happen at a point in time. So if you'd like to know about the narcissist will never find someone like you again, click this video here. So anyway, I'll be back with another video soon. Peace.